Space. It was dangerous when we first started exploring Sol, and it's only getting dangerous, sir. An outpost on the fringe of the bubble, occupied by anarchists who make up the rules as they go. Like this station which doesn't do Taco Tuesday. They do tacos whenever. You don't want to use the bio waste rooms here. Trust me. But do they even know the stakes? That soon life as we know it may never be the same. Unless we open up a portal to some side universe, where space legs never happened, we could call it the Legacy Universe. But we'd have to do that, like, today, because it's coming. And it's fast. Tyrannus, Tyrannus. the first Stargoid. An unknown threat from an unknown place. No roadmap knows where it's truly headed, and how many bugs it will bring with it. We have no unified front line out here. No Aegis, no Azimuth, no power players. Just a ragtag bunch of factions inexperienced against a more powerful foe. How many will die? And how many still even care how many die? For we live in a cynical society, driven by credits and rank. Egalitarian squabbles prompt us to wage war with ourselves. Delays in docking can result in the callous murder of loiterers. And the notorious members of the Pilots' Federation spend hours idle due to the petty penal systems. After the Mygoid genocide, humanity was eager to forget. But with Salvation's Proteus wave ending in disaster, our arrogance has called this era the Aftermath. But truly, we are just before the Aftermath. In the pre-Aftermath? Post-Math? Before, but after... Ow. Who put that pull there? Never mind. But we are just only beginning to see the consequence of our actions. To be able to see how blind we truly are, how we let our watchfulness slip, how we lost sight of what we were doing, we stopped paying attention, and, sorry, hold on, I need to focus on stalking right now. All right, I need to go back. Let's start from the beginning. Oh, I wonder, is that what's in store for humankind as well? A reset? A chance to change? Or could this be the end? After all, we are nothing but a group of space-bound chimpanzees vulnerable to the savage wilds of the vacuum, fragile under our beteckled armor, locking ourselves in hollow metal boxes held together by glue, scotch tape, and unicorn tears, so that one well-placed caustic missile could undo generations of progress. We are up against a race that calls space their home. We spend hours killing one Hydra, and now... Tyrannus brings a new unknown, a new threat which we are no doubt unprepared to face, and even if we were prepared, unwilling to do the work needed, because we know it will come at a price. More grind. Yes, the Titans are coming. Will they come on foot, in space, or both? We just don't know, and that should scare us. At the very least, we should back up our key bindings. And yet, Sound of alarms has become as common as radio static, so we tune it out. Like an old man telling a story, but he gets totally sidetracked talking about how back in his day there were no limpets. Well, maybe that's going to be a reality that we all face. When the bubble begins to burn and limpets can no longer be restocked, when anarchy is all that we have left, when it becomes easier to count the living than the dead, when there's no need to get new paint jobs, for there will be no one left to see them. Will we wish that we had delivered more fruits and vegetables in the name of democracy? Inside this Outpost 14, I decide to walk around. A defenseless metal box filled with air and meat, but at least my dolphin can run away. What can this outpost do? Without a frameshift drive, I can't help but feel trapped. And what of the people who live here? As I walk through the halls, I see no signs of panic. No packed bags, no lines at Apex, no liquidation sales at Pioneer Supplies. The ads still blare their merry jingles, urging us to spend credits, to shop, to consume. But what good will a new pair of trousers be when a Thargoid Titan rips your legs off and beats you to death with them? How much are you going to value those swanky new yellow loafers when you feel them penetrate your mouth and pierce your skull, severing your medulla umbilicata, and literally redefining foot and mouth? But yeah, despite this danger, I find the station filled with NPCs, unconcerned, going about their business, 
couples navigating small talk on first dates, old friends grabbing a pint and talking about past adventures, traders taking a break between halls, sitting on couches like lazy space gamers. If Pompeii had known the volcano was about to erupt, would they have sat there and binged on their era's equivalent to Galtube? Would they peddle petty missions or stand around socializing as the rumblings got louder and louder? If they were anything like the NPCs of 3308, then absolutely. These sheep will all think they're in the top 1%. They're more likely to be in the first 1% of people dying in the Thargoid War. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe those fruits and vegetables actually made up for double genocide and Tyrannus has come to share hugs and host an intergalactic tea party. Maybe I'm the one who's the cynic. But still I look out there and I see space. We once looked out there and wondered if we were alone in the universe. Then we learned we weren't. They were called mudlarks, they were pottery enthusiasts, and we killed them all. Look it up. And then the Thargoids came, so we tried to wipe them out. Twice. And now they look to be shaping up for a real fight. And I don't know if there's enough humanity in us to fight back. What I do know is this. In a short amount of time, the Stargoids will arrive. And we'll start to know what we're up against. And we'll each have to make a choice. Whether to take up arms and try and save the galactic slum that we call the Bubble, or to pack up and leave for Colonia, or maybe their legacy universe. This detective knows what he'll do. He's gonna fight using the only tools he knows how. Guns, and science, and um, narrative loopholes. Because for every station they burn, we'll boop a hundred of them right in their little noggins. For every light second of space that they take, we'll overcomplicate their BGS. For every barnacle they harvest, we'll chop down a forest and dump plastic on an ammonia world. For every escape pod they take, we'll eat a meta-alloy pizza roll and fill two escape pods with bio-waste and then make them eat it. If their motherships have mail slots, we'll slot block them. If they have landing pads, we will loiter on them. If they have Reddit, we will highly encourage them to spend their time there while we plan our next attack. If they have forums, we'll salt them. If they have memes, we'll repost them. If they have feet, we'll make them wear uncomfortable itchy socks. Because we are the elite, and we have ranks to grind. Humanity is one thing the Thargoids don't. Thousands of hours to waste on a fictional universe that has no bearing on reality. That kind of persistence is actually kind of hopeful. But if we don't, the consequences could be severe. Death, destruction, war, right up to the gates of Jameson Memorial. Hell unleashed to a scale that we have never seen before. Carnage, mayhem, acts of pure evil on both sides. Drama, betrayal, Intrigue, passion, mystery, excitement, adventure, purpose, fulfillment. Commanders digging once more into the fresh salty memes, finding new content to complain about and new metas to build. As the bubble burns, it will shine brighter than it ever has, like a neutron star going full disco ball. And new forms of death and revive will emerge from the flames like a baby born from the womb of creative energy, only totally on fire and riding a Harley Davidson like a bat out of hell, screaming like a Marshall Stack, and breastfeeding off the event horizon of a black hole. And the system chat will be lit with the voices of the elite crying out in joy as the universe is given another breath of life. And we can all look back and remember this moment and remember what we did during it. Well, on the other hand, it could just be a trade CG, but I know one thing, Tyrannus is out there, and Tyrannus is going to change everything. Keep your eyes out there in the black. It's going to be a rough and rocky few days for us commanders, and I hope we see each other on the other side. 07. This is Captain Spatula, logging out. How do I end the log? Nova, can you end the log? No. Sorry, can, can, you, can you stop the log? You spilled brandy in that part of my processor. Oh. Okay, right. Yeah, I forgot. Um, okay, well, where's the button to turn it off? Is it over here? Is that it? Yeah. Is it, no, no, that's the eject button, Nova. Now, this is the button. Here we go. Hello, this is Bradford here. I, I just came to tell you that uh, the, the footage, you know, of the aliens attacking uh, Jameson Memorial in Shinrata Desert. 
totally real, but uh, it was a hacker that Spatula just heard was doing a thing, and so he went and got photography. It was totally non-participatory, other than, uh, you know, being like the guy in, in the bush with the camera sort of thing. But, uh, you know, Bradford wanted to come here to tell you from his heart that you shouldn't hack. It's a bad thing. Uh, the hacking is bad, um, and you should feel bad. Um, because when you signed the TNA and the ELU um, that you signed when you when you when you purchased the game, um, it said no hackies. Okay, so you should not hack. Bradford says don't hack, don't hack people. Uh, but if you're gonna hack, check out Bradford's guide to how to hack Elite Dangerous for all your hacking tips so that you can be the best possible hacker that you can be. And uh, you know if it doesn't work, uh, please don't sue Bradford. And also don't don't ban Bradford from the game. Bradford likes to want to be in the game. Please don't ban me.